Let's talk about the ACS and how you're going to use it to make sure that you're ready for that check ride. In the very beginning are the table of contents. Find everything in here that's cross country flight planning related. Don't do weather yet. We're not there. We're we're two days right now. This in the scenario we're two days before our check ride, and uh, we did our basic route flight planning. That's what we're looking at. Cross country flight planning. That sounds like what we're doing. Knowledge elements. Read through these. Altitude selection, route planning, including consideration of air spaces, special use air spaces, air spaces, navigation and communication systems and facilities. We did all that. That's great. Calculate time, fuel, distance, rates, headings, ground speeds, etc. Estimated time of arrival to include a conversion to UTC. Fuel requirements elements of a VFR flight plan. We haven't done that yet. We're going to. So those are knowledge elements. These are skills. These are the skills you have to do. These are the actions you have to take. Prepare, present, and explain a cross-country flight plan to an evaluator, including a risk analysis based on real-time weather. Well, we haven't done that yet because we haven't got to the weather yet. To the first fuel stop. Okay. Apply. So first you had to prepare, present, and explain. Now we have to apply pertinent information. Well, that's, again, that's going to come from the final phases where we go through the weather on the airports page and NOTAMs and all that stuff. But we did see a couple of NOTAMs, but not all of them, okay? So we're not quite there yet. We're still in the plan basic route planning portion, okay? Okay. Recalculating fuel is, fuel is very easy when you have four flight. Okay, I'm gonna go back to page six. Keep in mind, a lot of what I'm doing here, guys, is just showing you how to use your device. Back to page six. This is pre-flight preparation. Now we're gonna go down here to the actual flight portion under navigation. This is what you have to be prepared to do in the airplane. Okay, so now we're under the practical portion. You have to be able to perform these functions in the aircraft. That's really what this whole conversation was designed to do. It's to set you up for success once you really get inside of an airplane and have to apply it under stress while getting bounced around, flying the airplane, talking on the radios, okay? So, pilotage and dead reckoning. You have to be able to you know, under, demonstrate an understanding of these things. Okay, we talked about that already, that you, you know, just allowing the computer to do the work without having any understanding of whether it's true or not is a fallacious, uh, is a fallacious way of doing business, I would say. You know, for instance, you're doing about 120 knots in a 172, so uh, you're not really doing about 111, maybe that, you know, according to the book anyways. So if your total distance was 10 miles, it should take about five minutes, plus or minus a few, well, just plus a few seconds. If it doesn't take five minutes plus a few seconds, something's wrong, right? We know we're burning about mm, six gallons per hour. That's one-tenth of an hour. <laughs> so I'm just saying, check your work, right? Make sure that the computer is doing things that sound about like what you would have expected them to be. It's called the common sense test. But anyways, in terms of pilotage and dead reckoning, the skills you have to demonstrate, you have to prepare and use a nav log. You have to navigate by pilotage. You have to navigate by means of a pre-computed, so pilot, navigate by a pre-computed heading, ground speed, and elapsed time. That's the dead reckoning. Demonstrate use of a magnetic direction indicator. That's your outer compass. Verify position within three nautical miles of the flight planned route. I said two. I guess that must be commercial. Sorry about that. Three. And I said three for the time. They said five here. Arrive at your checkpoint within five minutes of the initial revise. I think I guess I was thinking about the commercial requirements. Maintain the appropriate altitude plus or minus 200 feet and heading 15 degrees. Okay, that's what we have to do for piloted and dead reckoning. I believe our plan supports the demonstration of each of these skills. Do you agree with that? I think you should. Okay, navigation systems and radar services. You have to read all that for me, please, but don't. I'm not gonna do it now. You have to use an airborne electronic navigation system. We plan to do that. 
we have to determine our airplane's position using a navigation system. We plan on doing that. We did that as well. We have to intercept and track a given course radial and bearing as appropriate. We planned to do that as well in the using the VOR. Recognize and describe the indication of a station or waypoint passage. We didn't talk about that, but that's a flipping of the two from needle. You go study that. Recognize a signal loss or interference, take appropriate action, use proper communications, maintain altitude and heading guard. That sounds great. We have a plan that supports each of these requirements, so that way the examiner doesn't have to ask us to do it. Finally, diversion. This is the easiest of them all. No matter where you're at on this thing, your little blue airplane will be flying around. And if he says to you, great, you're about to fly into a thunderstorm, what do you want to do? Just simply put your hand on the map, say, well, let's turn around and go back to Centennial. We'll debrief when we get there. Here's my time, fuel, and distance. Very, very simple. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes route planning. And from here, it's really just uh, back to um, day before, day of. We're going to hop in here. We're going to go to the airports page and start uh, um, looking at weather, notams, and other threats, things that might actually stop us from going flying. Hopefully, everything works out great for you the day of yours, though. That's all I have to say. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I realize I'm a long-winded guy, and I apologize for that. But uh, this is really valuable information for you. And for the price, you just can't beat it. Hey, thanks. Talk to you soon.